Mal, it's Monday afternoon. Do you know what that means? No. It means that we're going to go tour the McLeod Children's Hospital. But you, you knew that already. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, well, that's, that's all that I meant. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Monday. Um, as I just said, we're up in the morning. Um, we, we stayed in Florence last night just so we could be you know, close to the hospital. And uh, it's just about time to go over on my invisible watch. So uh, let's get started on our day. Pretty much all the rooms are the same. Mm -hmm. Some are cribs and some are regular beds. Um, for our kiddos, usually about one and a half and younger, we'll go ahead and give them a crib just for safety reasons. Um, and then the couch will kind of fold down into a bed for our adults. And we try to make the room as child friendly as possible. Um, if you turn the lights off, actually, there's stars that glow in the dark. So at nighttime, it's lit up, not quite as scary. I mean, we want this to feel at home. A big part of my job is making sure that the patients are comfortable while they're here, that they have things to do, and that we can keep their schedule as normal as possible, whether it be recognizing a nap time or if they play video games every day when they get home from school, I'll roll a game system into their room. Um, if they like to do arts and crafts, we'll do arts and crafts and then let them actually hang it on the wall. A lot of kids actually don't really care for our pictures. They'll be like, let's cover that up. So I'll just bring a poster board in here and they'll like do something like with paint or something and we'll cover it up. Obviously some procedures have to happen in the room, but we do have the treatment room, which is where we try to take the kids if it's going to be anything invasive or scary. We don't want that to happen in their bed because just like your bedroom at home is your safe place your bedroom in the hospital is your safe place as well um so we try to keep this room strictly just living sleeping playing that kind of thing so their money this year that the resin is going to be to put ipads in each of the rooms mm -hmm. can you explain to them how you would use these how you do use the ipads with yes. a, a yes. patient I have one for Children's Hospital and I have one for the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. So I keep the iPad in my office and just kind of take it from room to room as needed. Um, so a lot of times the kiddos, I use it for different teaching stuff, medical, and then I also use it for normalization stuff. So um, we have two Xbox systems, but unfortunately when those are getting used, sometimes I will have to bring the iPad in the kids' room because they have the DVD player. but. Kids at this day and time, I mean, the new generations, they're less and less watching TV and more wanting like hands-on games and things like that. Anytime a child is getting a procedure or having to travel off the floor for imaging, like an MRI, x-ray, things like that, um, it's my job to make sure that the child understands what's going on. Um, if they're going to be touched anywhere, um, if they're going to smell anything weird, if they're going to hear or see something. So just an example of that, um, I have our app for our MRI machine. So I will use this to kind of show them what the MRI machine looks like. Um, so they can kind of see, I'll call it their donut. You know, you're going to ride through your donut. And I actually had a patient today. He said, I've seen that on TV. That's what the people with cancer go in. So like him being able to see it, he then said that. So I knew I had to clear up that misconception. Like people that go in the machines don't all have cancer. You know, <laughs> It may just be, we just need a big picture of your body. And also something we can do, um, a big thing with the kids when they go into the MRI, it, the noise really scares them. So this app actually has a feature where you can let them listen to it. So they can kind of, you can kind of prepare them, this is what you're going to hear, so then it doesn't shock them. You know, if they have some time to think about it and prepare, like it's a noise, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be touched or anything like that. So that's just one example of um, kind of like a preparatory teaching. We also have apps that are individual to the kid's diagnosis, so um, kids that come in with sickle cell, we have apps like this where we can go through with them and kind of see, um, I guess it's loading, but it has like information on the app, see the facts, like you can go through and they can learn and it's got kid friendly pictures and um, we can go through it and it explains it in a way that the kids can understand and then you can actually go um, and take like a little quiz with them to see if they genuinely understand you know what's going on with their body you know based on their development so another thing we like to do um, while the kiddos are getting procedures this is the best tool for distraction so I'll talk to the kids about what's going to happen to them and then I'll kind of tell them like hey like while the doctor and mommy do this, um, me and you can just watch the iPad. And a lot of times they'll be like, do you have Peppa Pig? So the great thing about the iPad is it's, you know, with YouTube kids, it's endless. Whatever those kids say they want to watch it, they'll be like, I want to watch another kid make Play-Doh, which I don't really get, but I'm like, okay, I can pull that up. Let's watch it. But we also have different relaxation stuff. 
So Pandora, we've got different apps that just play like nighttime sleep music. So a lot of times if the kids are having a hard time sleeping, like the moms will say, well at home, I have a sound machine and I'll say okay well we can try to mimic that so I'll leave the iPad in their room overnight and play a sound similar to what the kids might have at home in their nursery. Sometimes they don't get to go to the playroom if they have a high fever or if they're on contact or droplet precautions they can't leave their room so I kind of have to bring the playroom to them and so I just have a lot of different I've tried to split it up different apps based on like their age but I will just come in here and give them the iPad and we'll just sit and play. Like I said, the iPad's great because they can kind of pick their own games based on what they like and play just like they do on mama's phone. A lot of times the moms, when I bring the iPad, they're like, thank goodness, because the kids will be on their phones the whole time they're here. And obviously the mamas need to be making phone calls to like the pediatrician and home and updates and different things like that. We have the gaming systems, but the problem with the gaming systems is we can't get the newest games for everybody all the time. Games, unfortunately, walk off and leave the hospital. So to be able to replace what we have or to add to what we have, by well, having an iPad in every room, mm -hmm. then Olivia can gear it for the age groups. We can lock it for, you know, the parents can use this and use that. And then the two iPads that we have now, we can strictly use for education purposes for Olivia to be able to yes. come in and educate and demonstrate and have that security to make it just a happier, safer, more comfortable environment for the patients. Yes. Our IT department can actually view this iPad at any time and see what the kids are doing. And they've gone through, and even I don't have the password, I mean, they've locked where the kids can't get on Safari, they can't download certain rated games. So I can comfortably leave an iPad in the room and not have to worry at all about what the kids are gonna be seeing or anything like that. Um, and the biggest thing, so we have two Xbox systems, and y'all probably know this more about this than me, they're 360s, and so they actually apparently don't make games for those systems anymore. So a lot of the times the kids are coming in mentioning games that I'm like, what is that? And I'll look it up and it's not, you know, they only make it for the new Xboxes. I'm trying to think of the one that, Fortnite? <laughs> I hear that all the time, and I'm like, sorry kiddos. Can't, can't get it for the 360. But um, so that, that's another thing with this. I mean, we pretty much have access to all the latest and greatest so they can play what they want, things that are familiar, because that's the biggest thing is giving them something to do in here that they would do outside of the hospital so that they can see that, you know, this doesn't have to be a scary place that's so different from home, you know? Like I said, a lot of our younger kids um, and even our older kids, certain medical equipment really limits their mobility so um, they unfortunately cannot play games. They don't have, like I said, the mobility with their arms. They don't have the fine motor skills to tap and play. So um, I have found these little, I'm sure you've seen them. They will hook onto the bed and it's like a claw so that you can just, you know, if they can't sit up in bed, if they're just kind of laying there, you can actually hook the iPad up to kind of sit right above their head and play Pandora or play a movie you know sometimes you know you can log on to a Netflix if they have a Netflix at home I'll allow them to log on to their Netflix um, on here and they can just watch you know 20 episodes of bubble guppies you know whatever they whatever they're feeling so um that's been great because a lot of times they actually cannot see the TV because of the way that they're being and that's a big thing in the PICU and I'll kind of show y'all um, how those beds are set up and it's just, it's a lot more limited as to what the kids can do over there. Some of our bigger kids, they're just, you know, they're not as at risk for negative coping and things like that. But um, our little kids, we can come in here, we can strap them down in a papoose board. Um, it's a lot more, it's more comforting than being held down by people. So that we call it their seat belt. We tell them we're gonna strap them in um, just like they would in the car. And most of the time um, we strap them in and they're just kind of snuggled up and then we get done what we need to get done. A lot of times the parent will stand here, nurse there, and I'll kind of stand here at their head and kind of hold the iPad where they can see it. Like I said, a lot of Peppa Pig, um, a lot of bubble guppies, and Paw Patrol. Oh my goodness. But um, we've got all kinds of different distraction stuff in here. They get to go to the treasure chest afterwards and pick something out. <laughs> um, so like I said, we try to make this whole area as child friendly as possible. and. Um, we don't like anything scary, any big surprises. <laughs> um, but if y'all are ready, I will show you our pediatric intensive care unit. Well, we don't have the iPad, bubbles are very effective. <laughs> You'd be amazed how much kids just love bubbles. This is um, our tower with all of our critical care units. So the way that this is set up, um, the parents actually do not have access to the nurse's station. 
so if you follow me, the rooms kind of make a big U, and I, I think it's funny because it's kind of like their apartments. So when the parents get here, they just ring the doorbell, and this is how they get to the patient rooms. This just allows us to kind of control who's coming in and out. Um, a lot of times parents will have family members that maybe they don't want to visit, or maybe um, they just want more privacy while they're here. Because obviously if you're in the intensive care unit, you're in critical condition. So um, that is how they, and they have like this kind of seating and stuff, but I will show you the actual nurse's station in a patient room. So obviously there's um, a higher level of observation here, so the nurses have to be able to see the patient pretty much at all times. Um, these are our rooms. There's either a bed or a crib. Um, in this room, the parents actually don't have access to a bathroom or anything like that. Um, they unfortunately have to go upstairs. But the kiddos that are in here are obviously very sick. A lot of times um, they are hooked up to vents or trachs or they're intubated. And um, we have these hubs right here that can hold a lot of different machinery. Um, they can move around from room to room, obviously, if we have a code or something like that, we need to keep that very mobile. Um, the kiddos in here are usually very limited as far as their mobility. PT has to work with them a lot to help them move around and things like that. But it's the thing about our intensive care unit, these kids are allowed to go to the playroom, but they have to be accompanied by n uh, some kind of nursing staff, um, somebody with a medical background has to go back there with them because obviously things can go wrong. Um, so unfortunately our kiddos are kind of stuck in their rooms back here simply because a lot of times the nurses have multiple patients um, they, and they can't leave those patients to go to the playroom. Um, so we definitely have to get creative and bring games in here for the kids. Um, the game system spent a lot of time back here. A lot of movies are watched. But like I said, a lot of times the kiddos are intubated or something like that. Um, and they don't really have a lot of mobility with their hands. They're on medicines that keep them kind of drowsy, a little bit confused. So sometimes we'll come in here, we'll play Pandora. Um, I have found that some patients, I mean, I'll put on Temple Run and just play it for them. And they'll watch and they find that to be very interesting probably because I lose a lot. I'm always like falling off the cliff. But the kids love it. Um, and a lot of times we have siblings back here, so we'll bring the game systems and stuff in here for the siblings to play because Lord knows a lot of times they're confused. They don't really understand what's going on with brother or sister and they're bored out of their minds. So we got to make sure we give them something to do. We feed the parents as well as the child. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to leave your child to go to the cafeteria and get food, so the parents can order off the menu as well and we bring a plate. Um, to the parents so that they can stay with their child. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they come in after a car accident or something, traveling. I can't tell you how many people we have going to Disney World or coming home from Disney World with car accidents. So a lot of times we'll have multiple siblings in the same family um, and people don't realize once they get here they don't have anything. Um, so we have to try to find a way to give them clothes to go home in, um, car seats, different things like that. So donations I don't think people realize what a big deal they are and what they mean to us and the families to be able to give them a toothbrush and like I had a boy this morning that just wanted a pair of boxers you know you don't really think about things like that how you know comfortable little things like that are but um, we uh, we also have a treatment room in the intensive care unit so I'll let you take a look at that we still try to use the treatment room as much as we do on the floor but unfortunately, a lot of our kids are too sick to leave their beds. So a lot more happens at bedside in here. But we use this room for a lot of different things. Obviously, we have the um, the dog for tr different invasive procedures. I kind of have a little area over here. So I keep like my mama roof for my babies because so many babies come and they cannot go to sleep unless we put them in some kind of swing or something. So we do have a mama roof for our PICU patients. Um, I just keep crayons, wipes, Play-Doh, paint stuff that I can come over here and grab really quick if the kiddo gets upset. Um, we also have different carts in here. We've got um, ultrasound, we have got central lines, intubation, different stuff that if there is a code we can run in here and grab this equipment. This equipment is specific to children so it's kiddo size which it just kills me but um, the kiddo size stuff is actually sometimes twice as expensive as adult equipment. And that still shocks me because you would think it's smaller. 
it's less material, why would it be more expensive? I, I think the robots to make it have to be a lot more like precise, maybe. Yeah. It's the only thing I can think of. But yeah, and all this comes from um, money from donations and stuff like that. So a lot of our medical equipment, like these ginormous things in each room, they come from the foundation and different organizations like that. Hi, pal. You excited we're home? Yeah? How about you, toe sniffer? You're less excited, but still somewhat excited. I gotta tell you, it has been a fast whirlwind of a, of a weekend, but it's also been really fantastic. Southeast Game Exchange was really great. Met a lot of awesome people. Um, just had a, a fun time. Uh, got a chance to put on some panels that were good, you know, well-received, and uh, Mouse Workshop I enjoyed Mouse Workshop more than I enjoyed putting on my own panel because it was just actually my first chance to see Mal teach. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about that, but like Mal taught in a school setting. She was a teacher, so I, I never got to like sit in on classes and watch her teach. So watching her do that workshop was actually my first time seeing her teach, which was really neat. And then today, um, you know, touring the children's hospital was an incredible experience and I made sure to show a, a good bit of that but there was actually even more stuff that the that was on the tour that we just couldn't film because um, you know we weren't allowed to show any of the kids or or names or anything like that um, and we got a chance to see uh, the NICU and uh, that was that was such a interesting experience uh, to see um, all of the the staff just working around the clock to to take care of all of these um, all of these children. Uh, it was it was sad. It was heavy. It was it was heavy. Yeah. It was heavy, but also it was it was heavy with the knowledge that they have have done such an amazing job because they were telling us a little bit about it. And again, I couldn't film any of this this stuff, but um, whenever they were explaining it to us, they said that they had all of these. Uh, new regulations that they had done within new the last procedures. new procedures mm -hmm. within the last few years with um like making sure that people had to like they had to scrub up for like three full minutes and they had like a timer and they had to put on like these robes and Down. stuff they basically they they took the cleanliness level um like far above and beyond and they said that they had seen a re a crazy decrease in infections um because of that uh, because there's uh, something that um, you know babies can get, and I forget exactly what the technical mm -hmm. term for it was, but it's like an infection that's pretty common in you know hospitals and stuff like this because there's just so much happening. And they said that uh, before they put all these procedures in, in into effect, that it was like a 50% rate of the babies getting this particular infection. It's something that they could treat, but then you know the baby has to deal with the infection. And they said they went from like 50% to 1%. And that's crazy. That's that's so amazing. Um, and they've got all of this like really cool technology where they're able to... There was a room they said they couldn't show us on this particular day mm -hmm. where like if the babies are coming out of the um, neonatal intensive care, yeah. where the parents stay in this room one night before the baby's going to go home so they learn... You know, because they haven't had a chance to be with their baby and know how to hold it or feed it. Yeah. So they have, like, a whole night where the nurses will check in and make sure that they, they're comfortable with the baby before they take it home. It's it's just, it was a great experience. I'm, I'm glad we got to, to do the tour. And I'm glad that we got to show so much of what we got to show because you guys donate so much money to Extra Life every year. Yeah. And, you know, we appreciate that. The hospital cer much. certainly appreciates it. And uh, one of the things that we kept hearing throughout the entire tour was that, like, everything is made possible through donations. Um, when we got a chance to see the playroom at the very beginning, like, they said the individual stuff a lot of times was donated. And they said they had, what, two Xbox 360s? Yeah. And, like, that was all they had. And so, like, you know, they'd have to take turns, like, where they're putting it in the hospital for the kids to play. And, that, like, that's all they had. And they were really excited to get iPads with the money we're raising this year yeah, to be able to have an iPad for each bed, essentially. So that's the big thing that the money is going towards this year is being able to have iPads for every single room um, for all of the patients because they're kids and they want to they they play around on iPads, whether that's 
you know, watching shows on Netflix mm -hmm. or doing, you know, games on, on the iPad or doing whatever. Even the education stuff they were showing us was incredible. Like, yeah. things you don't think about, like the MRI machines are loud. Yeah. And that they can show a kid, well, this is how it sounds. It's all okay. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting to hear all of that because as an adult, I don't think about that sort yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. And I also don't interact with young kids very often. Mm -hmm. So to hear how, I mean, how passionate the staff was. And making sure that things are good for them. And yeah. It was, it was really, really great. Um, I really enjoyed that. I'm getting teary right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and when we walked into that playroom, I did too, so. It was, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that we get a chance to, to tour there. And I'm glad that you guys can see um, the actual hospital where all of these funds have been going to. And uh, I got to tell you, from, from talking with so many people who were both on camera and off, they are so appreciative of what you guys have been doing for the past Five, six. six. It's been six. This will be the seventh year. Yeah. This will be the seventh year. Um, and also, uh, I wanted to say that as of today, you can now start donating towards the Extra Life playthrough that is happening this year. Uh, it's going to be the first weekend in November. I forget what day that is. It's the 3rd, right? I think it's the 3rd. I think it's November 3rd. It's it's uh, that Saturday. Uh, that is when our Extra Life is going to be. It is GameCube themed. I firmly believe that we will have the entire GameCube collection by that time. Thank, Mostly thanks to you guys. Uh, you guys have been sending in tons of GameCube games and we appreciate it. We even got a bunch at the convention this, this weekend from viewers and patrons. Um, so you can check out the link in the description below. You can uh, go ahead and start donating towards uh, Extra Life this year with, uh, just make sure when you donate, you leave a comment with the name of a GameCube game that you want to donate towards. Uh, US slash North American releases yeah. only. And uh, we're gonna start getting the, the early donations in. And I know we're, we're still a little ways away, but I think it, it would be fun to start seeing where we're, we're heading this, this early on. So if you wanna and do what early- game we're gonna play first. Yeah, and there's it's a, it's the biggest library that we've ever had, mm -hmm. at least physically. We've done, I guess, Super Nintendo, but that was emulated. This is going to be actual physical discs, so it'll be cool to uh, to have such a huge, you know, physical library. So, yeah, um, you can you can start donating now, and uh, I'll do my best to keep that list updated so you guys can see what's in the lead. Um, our goal this year, by the way, is. $30,000. Um, you guys surpassed 25000 last year, which was uh, pretty far above and beyond yeah. what we were aiming for. So um, we are, we're, we're just up in the ante. We're going straight to 30000 We feel like we can do it with your help. So get excited for that. I'm really excited. It's, it's going to... I'm just... I'm pumped because GameCube's great. It is great. GameCube's great. We're also going to have Dan. We're going to have Dan. We're gonna have Dan. Um, that's why you should tune in. <laughs> that's a good reason. We're gonna have Dan helping us out this year too, uh, because we need. We're we're now to the point where the event is big enough where we need someone dedicated to reading off donations, keeping the list updated, things like that. So uh, Dan's gonna be here helping us as well. So it's gonna be a big event. We are very excited about it. And um, if you want to start donating now, you certainly can. And I'm really. <sighs> I'm looking forward to seeing what gets donated towards, but I'm also wondering if there's going to be another fish to win. Because last year we ended up playing, there was there was like a thousand, two thousand dollars like donated for us to play. Um, Bassmaster. Yeah, two thousand. It was like a a terrible N64 fishing game. I enjoyed um, it. So who knows what what will happen? I guess we'll see. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Now that we're home, we got a few things we need to take care of, mostly get settled back in and then get back to normal work life tomorrow. So wish us luck. Thanks for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?